This is the Valve Index, the headset I've been using daily for almost four years now. I've worn this thing for thousands and thousands of hours. I love it. But this, well, this is the headset I'm replacing it with. No, 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 not this one, this one. So I've been hinting at some new VR headset that I've been excited about for almost two years now. And there's been lots of weird speculation on what it could be. Some people thought it was maybe the Deckard or Index 2. Some people thought it was maybe some Apple headset or Pimax something, but nope. All this time, it's been something that nobody would really expect, but it's a super tiny, small form factor PC VR headset from big screen. Yep that big screen. And what they've done here is actually really insane. You know, I've always wondered for the express purpose of PC VR, why do we need huge, massive VR headsets? Like for standalone hardware like the Quest or Pico, it makes total sense. You've got the whole processor and battery and cameras. I mean, the extra bulk and weight is necessary. These things can run all by themselves for hours and do wireless VR, and that's awesome. But as soon as you plug something into a PC, that battery becomes unnecessary. The on board processor is only used for maybe tracking data. And just in general, I've wondered for a long time now, what happens if you take advantage of the fact that you're plugging something into a computer and just get rid of all the excess, make something as small, light, and simple as humanly possible. And that's exactly what this is. This is the big screen beyond, something that just got announced this week. And this is sort of an impressions video, sort of a finally I can talk about this video, but this is not a full review yet. I do have a headset right here, but uh, it's actually non-functional. The displays were taken out, so we'll have to wait a little longer for a full review and I'll talk about why later. But over the past two years, I've actually helped QA test and provide feedback on the Beyond. So I've had quite a bit of time with its various prototypes. And I will also state not a single penny has been given to me for my time testing the Beyond and not a single penny will be given to me in the future by big screen. They did offer an affiliate link, but I don't really feel all that comfortable taking money for something I'm reviewing. I purely helped give feedback on the headset because, well, I really love the concept and it's advice that I would actually want to use. So now that that's completely out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. The Big Screen Beyond is a very, very special headset. It's probably the lightest and smallest I've ever seen, weighing 127 grams. Compare that to the Valve Index weighing in at 809 grams. But that's actually not even what makes it special. It's natively Steam VR tracked, meaning you'll need base stations, it's got a set of pancake lenses, and dual 2560 by 2560 micro OLED displays. And oh boy, we'll get into my experience with the lenses and displays in just a moment, but some more boring stuff. The Beyond has a pretty standard 90 hertz refresh rate, and in this press release, it says the field of view is only 93 degrees horizontal by 90 vertical, but in my experience, it was actually quite a bit more than that. In fact, I even measured it at way higher than that. And it's about the same as the Quest 2's field of view. And when I asked Big Screen CEO why the measurements look so low, I mean, it looks terrible on paper, he said, quote, I figure people will measure on their own and will also say, hey, I got more. A big part of our strategy is to underpromise and overdeliver, end quote. Which, you know what? I can't argue with. It's actually really refreshing coming from other companies and their boisterous claims on stuff. But there's the answer on field of view. And the Beyond is, of course, wired, although I wonder if Nofio could possibly do something about that in the future. And then in terms of IPD adjustment, there is none. Whoa, 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 did you just say none? There's no way to adjust IPD on this headset? And yeah, you heard me right. You cannot adjust the IPD on this headset. And this is exactly where the big screen beyond gets special. When you order one, you have to do two things. One, you have to take a face scan using a phone app. This will create a 3D model of your face shape and measure exactly what your IPD is down to the millimeter. It'll also measure your cheekbones, brows, everything. And two, you also have to submit your eye prescription. Big Screen will then custom make the face gasket to perfectly fit your face based off of the 3D scan. The lenses will then also be custom made to match your prescription. So even if you wear glasses, it's no problem. In VR, you'll always have perfect 2020 vision with this headset. It's pretty freaking cool. It's actually a VR headset that's really made for you. Now, this obviously has some massive benefits, but also has some drawbacks. And this is kind of something totally new to the VR market in general. 
So let's just quickly talk about the benefits first of this whole thing, and then we'll go into the big questions and drawbacks. Big Screen makes their custom facial interfaces using this light, airy, almost porous foam. It's a kind of material that I've never seen before, and I'm not sure if it's printed or how it's manufactured. All I know is that it's comfortable. And it's comfortable enough that I was able to watch the entirety of One Punch Man in one sitting while wearing the Beyond. And plus, it's made for your face, so it literally fits like a glove. There are no hot spots. It's kind of like VR just starts where your face ends, and I don't think I've ever had something custom made for my face and eyes like this. But of course, there are negatives regarding this whole philosophy. Yes, this is a headset built exactly for you, but that means it's built for you. The facial interface won't match anyone else's face unless they have the exact same face as you, which is kind of weird. The prescription and IPD are perfect for your eyes, but nobody else's unless they have the exact same prescription and IPD. So this isn't a shareable headset. And for some people, I'm sure that's a big turnoff, and I've actually thought about that pretty hard. And then I counted how many times I've actually had someone over and showed them VR on my index, and I realized, honestly, I'm pretty much the only person that uses my index. If I'm gonna show someone VR, it's usually a quest or something on the go. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, but I'd understand if there are people that did have that problem. The two things that are a big deal is that all of this custom stuff just isn't cheap. And the second thing is how are you going to resell something that is custom made for you after you're done with it? So the Beyond starts at $999. That's not including base stations, not including controllers, not including the audio strap add-on. It's a grand for just the headset and strap. That's a lot of money, and I'll talk about whether it's worth it in my experiences section, but what about reselling this thing too? That's another issue. Well, you just have to buy a new facial interface with someone else's 3D scan and a set of lenses. It's not terrible, but it's also not ideal, but you can resell it. And so I do have to say, again, this is not a full review. I have not tried a full production unit, so I have no clue what the final thing will be like. And as soon as I do get that final unit, I will make a full review, but I have to tell you guys about my experience using the revisions that I have tried because it actually blew my mind. These are hands down the best displays I've ever seen VR with. The resolution isn't quite as high as the Vario Aero or Vario XR3, but in terms of resolution, there's kind of diminishing returns beyond this resolution anyways. You just can't physically see pixels anymore, so it's kind of hard to judge what looks better. But where I can judge is in the insane colors and contrast ratio. I don't think I could have possibly understood how important important contrast ratios were for immersive VR until I got into Half-Life Alex with this headset and it looked like an entirely different game. Oh man, holy cow. I have never seen Half-Life Alex like this before. Shadows were pitch black, the sun was piercing bright. Like I was actually squinting, not because it was actually so bright that it hurt, but because going from dark areas to light areas in game gave me the same physical reaction I've had a million times in real life. And that was just with with an early, early unit two years ago. The displays then got brighter and colors got even better. And in my most recent demo, I had a crazy moment. Playing kayak VR in Antarctica at nighttime was surreal. Looking up and seeing this bright moon shining amid a pitch black sky. I mean, there's actually nothing else like it ever that I've ever experienced. Such a weird feeling, like my pupils have dilated because it's dark here. Oh, wow. It's kind of one of those things that you have to see to believe. And if you haven't seen micro OLED displays in VR like this, I'd almost say that you can't believe it. Another experience was seeing my own VR chat club, something that I built to be a crazy audiovisual experience. And it's nuts. I've been there a thousand times, but I've never seen it like this. And of course there is the drawback of field of view. It's about the same field of view as the Quest 2, but especially in these dark areas, the area that's not VR, you know, like the typical binocular thing of VR, looks entirely different because the screen is black when it's dark. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but the lower field of view didn't bother me, and normally that's something that I would never trade, especially because I'm coming from the index. And then it's almost weird to talk about comfort with the Beyond because, well, it's molded to your face and it's so light. I don't know, it just feels weirdly natural. And I'm actually able to wear a hat while wearing a VR headset, which is kind of crazy. That makes me more comfortable than actual comfort, if that makes sense. But I know that there's 
there's gonna be people that just don't get the Beyond. It's expensive, not like Pimax or Vario expensive, but a grand is a grand. Plus, it doesn't come with controllers, it has no face tracking, no eye tracking, no pass-through, it isn't a standalone headset, and it's wired, and that's all completely valid. I get it. But it does do one thing really, really freaking well, and in a way that no other headset out there is doing. It's a fantastic PC VR headset. It's probably the best at its one job. It's better than the Quest Pro where face and eye tracking barely work on PC anyways and you have to deal with compression either through AirLink or virtual desktop or through USB link. It's better than the Index in almost every single way. It's just really, really good at its job. And I think that's what Big Screen was going for. They had one goal to make the best PC VR headset they possibly can for the PC VR user with the technology they have now. And this was the result. Really, the Beyond is built for the people that already know they love PC VR. It's for the VR chat or PC VR in general power user or even the simmer that has used an Index or Vive Pro for years, already has knuckles and base stations and is just looking to upgrade to a better PC VR headset that isn't a crazy expensive Vario. And if you're a Quest 2 user and you're happy with your Bobo M2 and AirLink, then by all means, I'm happy for you, keep on keeping on, but this just isn't for for you, I don't think. That is, unless you want to drop a bunch of money on base stations and controllers and the beyond. But like I said, this is, in my opinion, just much more of an upgrade for people that are already in the Steam VR ecosystem and love full body tracking or messing around with base station tracked things. Yeah, it's a niche. And it might be a small niche, but that just happens to be my niche, and this makes me very happy. And also, I do not think the index is dead. I'm still keeping mine close. In fact, I'm working on modernizing it by adding face tracking and eye tracking, and I'll definitely be making a video on that soon as well. But that actually brings up a good point. This is a lot of money to be dropping on a headset that doesn't have face and eye tracking. And well, I suppose you definitely can throw on the Vive face tracker, which is something I'll definitely try when I can. But we're just gonna have to look into other solutions for eye tracking a little later on, kind of like what I'm doing for the index. This is a downside, but I have a feeling that we'll be able to fix it. And also I should say that I made them put the best possible mic in this thing. It sounds even better than the index. I told them that I would not use this if the mic wasn't good and the mic's good. I don't know why it's been so hard to just throw a good mic in a headset, but here we go, it's good. But really, I'm just super excited. This is pretty much my dream headset right now. Besides no face and eye tracking, yeah, that sucks. But the cable means I'll never ever have a dead headset. And I've got a perfect zero compression image. It's tiny, custom, the micro OLEDs are fantastic and beautiful, and it will just take the place of my index. It just slots right into what I normally use. Well, like I said, this was just an impressions video and not the full unit, so keep on the lookout for the full review probably in a few months whenever I do get that actual full production unit. And these should be shipping around late summer, at least that's what it says on the press release. But I do actually have some awesome announcements for this channel just real quick. I'm sure you've noticed that there's been no Tuesday news days. And well, I've been working on the formula and kind of just taking a break from it, but the series will be coming back and with some fresh changes next week. And also next week, I will be bringing back Twitch streams. It's been a long time, but Twitch was really an extension of this channel where I would talk live about VR and the industry in ways that I really can't do in video format. It was almost like a weird podcast. So I'm excited to be bringing both of them back. I am ready and rejuvenated and I'm so pumped. But anyways, what do you think about the Beyond? Is this something that you've been wanting or waiting for? Are you as excited as I am? Let me know down below. All that I can say is all you Index and PC VR fans out there, rejoice. Someone out there actually cares about you. Either way, thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.